Hello everybody. So, right, we are getting the um, motors on, getting the ESCs on, the speed controllers. For now, I thought I'd just uh, show you what I've done so far on the front. You can see that okay. This, this light. You can see that okay, so what I've, what I've done with them, I'll show you from here is on mine, I have put a a flexible flexible silicon coating on, which acts as a great insulator, and I put them on both sides to help um, stop moisture from getting on there. Because sometimes when I fly, it's in the winter, it comes out of a warm vehicle going into the cold. You know, you've probably seen it with your goggles or glasses; they get steamed up. You can happen the same things with these. Um, and then I, on this so far, what I've done is I've put a little bit of, little bit of heat shrink onto the leg itself, arm, leg. And before I put all that on, I put some heat shrink around the outside, like this. And so I can pull all this through so that sits underneath there and then just heat shrink it down like I've done on the front here. Now the motors that I'm using are Brother Hobby Returner uh, 3's and unfortunately I can't get hold of these motors anymore so what will happen if I damage a motor on this quad is that I will um, have to take them all off and replace the set uh, which is a pity because you know, these are very light, they're 28 grams. I think this whole thing's like, you know, 34, 35 grams. It's, uh, they're 28 grams, the motor, and they work really well. They're 1720 kV, and they work really well. So I've been using them, you know, for quite a while with 4S battery and 6 inch propellers, and they seem to be fine. Seems to be absolutely fine. Um, we've got those soldered onto the board now. The black and white there for the control, for the signal, and they're not ready to go on yet because they're going to go onto they're going to go onto the flight controller. And I'm just in the middle of debating what I'm going to do about flight controllers, and I'll tell you for why because this flight controller, although it's great, it doesn't have SPI on it, which means I don't have any. Um, SDL, S SDA, SDC, or SC. I can't remember. One's clock and one's data, anyway. And I don't have those connections on here, so that means even if I wanted to show you, I can't put a, I can't put a um, GPS with a magnetometer on there with a compass, because you need the SPI for that. So. I'm still going to have a little think about what to do here because I do have um, another board that gives me that facility. In actual fact, it's another Maytag board. This is the F405 OSD, and the F405 STD is the one with the spy connection on there. So I'm not sure whether this is going to go on here just yet. We'll get around to that when I actually do that. I'll have decided by the time I've got the end of this done, got something to eat, I'd have decided what I'm going to do there. This was just to um, talk to you about this and connecting these up now. Um, some might query, hey, what happens if it's going around the wrong way? Well, for the electronic speed controllers, I use multi-shot on these, and I, 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 I use multi-shot because it's like in the middle of everything. It's not the greatest, let's say, or it's not. It's not the newest and the latest, and it's not the oldest. It's in the middle, it's a good old rounder. And I certainly don't need the speed that maybe some people do. It's like the same for my um, my receiver. I'll use this little dipole receiver, it's a TVS, and it uses a Crossfire protocol which can go up to 150 megahertz. And I don't really need 150 megahertz. I'm nowhere near as fast as 150 megahertz. I'm in my 50s. Um, if anything, I need to slow down a bit. 
So uh, I'll, I'll, I set mine to 50 megahertz, and um, that actually gives you extra range. It's a, it's a lower frequency, which has got more punch to it, and gives you extra bit of extra range. So I, I tend to use it like that. Um, so yeah, so back to the ESCs. Uh, so I've used these. I'll put it up on the screen what they are. They are the Raystar RS thirty eight, which is um, you know, just thirty amp. I think you can do like a forty amp burst on them if you wish, but uh, that's each ESC. That means you know forty. So one sixty would be the whole system, and I don't, I don't think this isn't going to do that. This is just not going to particularly do that. So. So they they weren't truly uh, good enough for the job, and they only weigh six grams each as well. So they're not particularly very heavy. Yeah, so that's that. That's getting there so far. Uh, I'll try and keep it neat. Try and keep the cables as short as possible. Okay, guys. So we have the other ESCs on now. I didn't have enough of this clear um, key trim to do the backs, I thought I had some extra stuff somewhere but I couldn't find it so I just gave up and so I've used some red heat shrink as you can see on these and just used the, the clears just to put down the edges because this is where the, you know, if you get a bit of a bent prize so where it's going to be hitting but I don't worry about it too much, it should be okay now, I told you before didn't know about the motors, the 2206's on this frame you, I think you put 1806's as well so the guys with the Hubson motors you can put those on here um, and I have prepared the flight controller and by that I mean I've, um, I've found I've given it a connection here ready to put onto the 5 volts here to power up the flight controller I put a buzzer on as you can see this connection here is for my receiver. I'm using the TBS receiver because it's um, I like them um, they're cheap enough and they work really well. And uh, it's what I've got available. And the camera connection is on there. Now on the board here, I have got my five volt ready to go for the connection to the board I'm also using the 5 volt from here so I've used the actual cam 5 volt for my VTX that'd be fine and I've got the VTX wired up so I've got to uh, this is for TX4 for my smart audio and this is to go for the camera of course for the VTX sorry and uh, we don't have an on screen display because the on screen display is built into the board so there's none of that on this and all I've got to do then is connect up the signal wires from the ESCs onto the board itself. And that should really be ready for testing then. Um, we won't plug in the VTX straight away for testing, but we can certainly put in the, uh, the receiver, connect that on. Uh, I don't know if I said to you, I don't know if I explained, but the VTX is, I'm going to put some standoffs on top of these. And then the VTX here is it's you know sits on top of there on here because on the VTX I've got this uh, little TBS 5 volt system and that's on a what they call it they call it a white uh, a white noise FPV oops white put noise FPV board I got the board because one it means I can actually stick it on the stack and secondly because it connects to the board uh, it, it helps with heat dissipation and of course that's always handy when it comes to video transmitters it's got the little UFL connector, which means you know I can put on a uh, various antennas. Um, I do prefer the new designs of these with the other types of connectors, MMX, MMCX. I can't remember what they call, but the snap in and snap out. Uh, these can tend to rip the pads off the board sometimes, but that's the way that's going to go. Oh, this way around, and then my little. My little connection there will just just have just enough just enough wire to be able to connect into this beautiful and this will have just enough wire to connect to the um, connect to the receiver which will sit underneath the top plate I will put that on there in some fashion so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put all this together I might just put a little image of this at the end of this video it's concluding now and then tomorrow we're going to go through the software setup. 
because we need to look at the BL Heli setup for the ESCs and then we're going to look at the, uh, the software setup or you know another software setup iNav we're going to use I'm just used to iNav now I like iNav it's developing and developing and developing I just really like that and I'll say thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one guys oh just before I go listen um, this is rather than sometimes you connect it up and you find there's a problem something's cross-wired, you know, you've got a positive and a negative or something like that. I, I have found, no matter what I've built, whether it be audio employers, it doesn't matter what it is that I've built, it's always been easier and quicker to check, double check, and then recheck it. Rather than, don't do that, and then find a mistake and have to correct the mistake. So remember, you want to check, double check and then recheck because it is a lot more efficient and it is a lot easier to do that than trying to correct mistakes because sometimes correcting mistakes uh, you know it's, it's going to be a right pain in the backside and so yeah that, that's one thing I wanted to say uh, yeah so, that, so right on that see you in the next one guys cheers for watching and uh, I'll be flying